Welcome to the Love and Light Live podcast, empowering crystal lovers and spiritual entrepreneurs to learn and experience the art of crystal healing. Get ready to listen in and join our crystal movement. Hello, and thank you so much for joining me for the Love and Light Live podcast brought to you by loveandlightschool.com. I'm your host, Ashley Levy, and this podcast is the number one place for all things crystals. In today's show, we're going to explore the healing properties of Orange Aventurine, a crystal for inner reflection, and you may be familiar with Green Aventurine or maybe even Blue or Pink or Red, but Orange is one of those that's definitely less common and it has some really exciting properties. But before we dig into our main topic, I want to answer one of our listener questions. Remember, you can submit your own questions anytime at loveandlightschool.com slash ask for the chance to have your question answered right here on the show. So today's question comes from Abigail Paul, and Abigail asks, how do you make an effective drink for health, abundance, calm, etc. using crystals? I'm worried about safety or toxicity, so reliable sources would help. Also, can alcoholic drinks safely include crystals? Well, Abigail, let's break this down and answer your first question first. So I'm going to point you to the website loveandlightschool.com slash blog. And once you're on the blog and looking at all of my articles, um, over in the right hand side, there's a search bar and you can look up how to create crystal elixirs safely. And this is an article that gives you a step-by-step process for creating your own crystal essences, gem waters, and crystal elixirs using the indirect method of preparation. So this article takes you through step-by-step exactly what you need to do. There's even a little visual aid there to help you. And then there's some extra information about some of my favorite resources for checking the toxicity of your minerals and also um, a pretty incredibly thorough list uh, that we call our crystal caution list. And this goes through anything that would be toxic to ingest, even if just a little bit. Now, I do want to caution you, just because you don't see something on this list doesn't necessarily make it safe. So I personally never recommend working with the direct method of preparation where your crystals go right in the water, but instead always working with the indirect method where there's always a glass barrier between, but your crystal water can still be infused with the energy of the stone and still be charged up with the vibration that you're looking for. So to answer your question, how do you make a drink for health, abundance, calm? You would just choose crystals that correspond to the properties that you're looking for, and you can create your own crystal elixirs using the step-by-step information on that blog post how to create crystal elixirs safely. Now for your second question, Abigail, can alcoholic drinks safely include crystals? Well, yes, instead of creating a crystal elixir, technically you could create a crystal infused wine or spirit. That would be fine as well. Um, But really think about the interaction between the beverage, the plants used in that beverage and the crystals so that you get things that complement one another. Abigail also asks, what's the backstory of how you created this wonderful organization? Well, Abigail, this is um, quite a long story, so I wanted to let you know you can hear the whole thing, my whole journey on the blog uh, again, and the article is called How I Went from a Crystal Lover to an International Crystal Teacher, and there's actually an accompanying podcast episode as well, so if you want to hear me share my story, feel free to find that podcast episode, How I Went from a Crystal Lover to an International crystal teacher or take a look over on the website to read the transcript. So thanks again, Abigail, for your excellent questions. And again, if you have a question you'd like me to answer for you about crystals or spirituality or anything else that you're curious about right now, let me know over at loveandlightschool.com ask. 
And now it's time to dive into our main topic for the day, the healing properties of orange aventurine. So you know I always like to start these healing properties episodes with a little message from the stone. And here's the affirmation that came through for orange aventurine. I take a sacred pause to release thoughts that weigh me down, making mental space for new clarity and inner guidance. This is a really long one, so I'm going to read that one one more time. I take a sacred pause to release thoughts that weigh me down, making mental space for new clarity and inner guidance. So Orange Aventurine really helps you become present to your feelings and your emotions and understand how you're feeling and really experience those and feel into those feelings. It also enhances feelings of happiness, joy, optimism, and contentment. It promotes relaxation and rest and allows you to kind of discover some of the simple pleasures of life. It really lets you kind of kick back and, you know, enjoy the present moment. It also energetically supports you while you're working through emotional traumas and creates moments for that sacred pause and reflection. It's such an excellent companion crystal and ally to have with you when you need to be reminded to take those moments, to hold sacred space, no matter where you are or what you're doing. This crystal also increases feelings of personal freedom and encourages exploration. And I mean this in kind of all ways, exploration of other ways of thinking, of other cultures, of other places, of other spiritual paths. And I think it's this sense of exploration and freedom that allows Orange Aventurine to also help you overcome blocks to your creativity. And it encourages you to tap into your hidden talents because it really lets you kind of dig deep and find that freedom to express yourself. And it kind of comes out in new ways sometimes. This crystal also aids in decision making and encourages you to enjoy the fruits of your labor. So after all of that hard work is done, after all those difficult decisions have been made and you're further down the path, it lets you take a moment to celebrate and it promotes this celebration and appreciation of your hard work, but also of your relationships, of your support network. Further, this crystal helps you find the treasures, gifts, and lessons in difficult situations. I know so often we want to move out of that place of challenge and obstacles and into the place where everything feels okay without looking back, but it's by looking back that we can really understand and appreciate the lessons and gifts that were present in those challenges. Now, Orange Aventurine is also a great crystal to work with if you're doing any type of inner reflection, inner journey work, because it helps silence your inner critic. So it really shuts down that negative self-talk. And for this reason, it's also a great companion for any kind of shadow work. Orange Aventurine is also thought to enhance your intellect and your feelings of personal wisdom. It allows you to discover and appreciate your personal strengths, and it helps calm intense emotions. So if you find yourself getting pulled one direction or the other way too far, it just helps you find that place of balance. Now, because of this, it also increases physical and emotional vitality and resilience because it keeps you from going way up and way down in those peaks and valleys and just keeps everything stable. Orange Venturing also encourages you to speak your true feelings with compassion. It facilitates guided meditation journeys and visualizations, and it's been known to enhance confidence and instill feelings of courage and bravery. Now, finally, one of the reasons I've been connecting with this crystal a lot lately is because of its ability to help you find that inner stillness during meditation. This crystal is a beautiful orange color, and it can really range from a soft peach to a pumpkin orange, or even a burnt orange red. It corresponds to the root chakra, the sacral chakra, and the solar plexus chakra, and it enhances the positive attributes of Taurus and Virgo. It relates to the element of earth, and its companion flower is the fritillaria. Its companion essential oil is calendula, and its companion stone is blue aventurine. It's commonly found in India and Chile. And as I mentioned before, although aventurine is more commonly found in colors like green and blue, the color in orange aventurine is attributed to inclusions of hematite or goethite. 
Now this might be a new crystal to you, so I wanna share one way that you can work with this stone. If something's really troubling you or weighing on your mind, you can hold a piece of orange aventurine in your hands, take a few deep breaths, and allow any thoughts pertaining to the situation to flow through your mind. Let these thoughts just flow for about 30 to 60 seconds with no judgments, just being present to them, and then write in your journal or on a piece of scrap paper all the things that popped into your head. Do a complete mind dump and just get everything out onto paper. Let the energy of the orange of entering support you as you really clear out all this mental clutter that might be preventing you from seeing clearly or determining the best way forward. So after you jot down everything you can think of, and I mean every little thing that popped in your head, and a few more things might pop into your mind while you're jotting down the things you thought of during this really quick meditation, Take a few moments to hold your stone again and then reflect on what you've written and hold the intention to release all the thoughts that are just mental clutter and then gain insight about the way forward from the thoughts that remain. Well, that's it for our main topic for the day. And now for our trending this week segment. In this segment each week, I bring you a quick discussion on something that's happening in the world of crystal healing and spirituality right now, or something that I'm just really loving that I want to share. And this week, I want to talk about a little bit of a personal practice that I've been working with over the past few months, and it's something that I've really been enjoying. So each month, being the Sagittarius that I am, I really deep dive into studying and understanding and learning the myths and legends and lore of a different goddess. So for April, that goddess was Bridget, and for May, that goddess is Aphrodite. So each month, I really dig into a goddess, I research everything I can about that goddess in books and online, and I work with crystals that I feel correspond to the energy of that goddess, and I set up a little sacred space for that goddess on my altar, and I just try and embody the lessons from that goddess each and every month, working with those crystals as reminders of her energy. And this has been a practice that has really deeply connected me with the divine feminine. And I just want to give a shout out to my friend Nicholas Pearson, who is an amazing, amazing crystal author, someone that I always learn something from, and his amazing book, Stones of the Goddess, Crystals for the Divine Feminine, has definitely been a well-read companion over the past few months. So if you're not familiar with that book, Stones of the Goddess, Crystals for the Divine Feminine, I really encourage you to check it out. And in fact, I had Nicholas on the podcast all the way back in December of 2018, discussing this book and some of the amazing insight and lessons that were presented to him while he was writing it. So if you haven't listened to that episode, you can listen to the interview on the podcast, you can go read the transcript on the blog, but it's called Stones of the Goddess, an interview with Nicholas Pearson. And in that interview, we really deep dive into the topic of goddess energy, of working with crystals, of different spiritual paths that incorporate the divine feminine. Just such a beautiful interview and one that I hope you'll really enjoy. Well, that is it for this week. I hope that you found a lot of value in today's show. If you want more information about anything I discussed in this episode, you can learn more over on the website at loveandlightschool.com slash blog. And if you did enjoy the show today, the biggest compliment you can give me is to leave a quick rating and review over at loveandlightschool.com slash iTunes. And while you're there, don't forget you can subscribe through that link as well so you never miss a future episode. You can also find us streaming on all the other popular podcast services by going to loveandlightschool.com slash listen. That brings us to the end of this episode of the Love and Light Live podcast. I'm your host, Ashley Levy, and I'll be back with you in our next episode. Until then, crystal blessings. The Love and Light Live podcast is a production of the Love and Light School of Crystal Therapy. Visit us online at loveandlightschool.com.